I'll switch over to the demo machine real quickly. And here we are. Now, by popular request, we added a feature, probably our, our top feature. Um, but just watch very carefully as I launch Flash and I open another document. Thank you. I'm done. Um, yes, yes. So uh, please, please Twitter that so I can stop getting those emails. Um, so. We did that. Uh, and by the way, did anyone watch what Mark typed in my Twitter account? Because like, he didn't tell you it was actually mine, so uh, who knows what I'm going to get that. But, uh, all right, so let me give you a quick sneak. So this is our, uh, our, our new interface, and I'm gonna, once again, I'm going to go very quickly. Uh, first thing I want to show you is I'm not going to cover all the details because this is something we're kind of holding back a little bit until Max, but just to give you a quick sneak, look at my text field. Um, if you notice, uh, we, have, we now have support for TLF text um, inside of uh, a Flash. And of course, if I type in, notice the options. So anyone who is looking for text features, um, I'll, uh, let's just say we, we, we have quite a bit now. Um, and you're going to have to wait on those because we're going to show you a lot more about TLF uh, text support um, very soon. What I want to show you is really more on a feature um, some more of our development features. So a lot of you um, were asking, like, what have you guys done for developers? And so we want to kind of show you a little bit of what we've done there. So let me actually open a um, file here. Open. And I've got a couple of files. Now this is a very simple, simple file. Um, I'm just kind of like experimenting with showing somebody how to like create a game. So I've got an app. Um, and I've got this little character there. Now, first thing we did is we wanted to make some of the development capabilities available to, uh, I guess, new programmers, designers, and uh, kind of bring people up to speed on learning ActionScript 3. One of the things that we heard from a lot of people, especially from the transition from AX3 to AX3, is that they were having a hard time catching up on AX3, especially when you come from the design side. So we wanted to make it a little bit more approachable. So we've added a feature that hopefully allows you to kind of get started quickly and then be able to learn about it more. So you notice I've got my character. Now I want that. I want to move that character around my map. That requires me to type code. That requires me to add an event listener, and, I, and it requires me to actually type some code to move the, move the item around. So let me show you how I do that now very quickly. I'm going to go to a new panel, and I'm just going to select this uh, code snippet here. Set apply, and you notice we now write the code for you for some very simple examples. The great thing about it is that this is customizable, so you can add your own code snippets into this. I'm just going to modify the, uh, my map is based on a 50 uh, pixel grid, so I'm just going to make this 51, and I'm going to go in here and just preview this. There's a simple, simple interaction, okay? So this is really more for getting some designers to be able to use some code, especially very reusable code. As a developer, you can actually write your own code snippets and make it available to a designer or someone in your office that actually doesn't actually use a lot of code. But that's not the main thing we kind of worked on. Uh, so I, I built this game. I've got this character going. But what if I wanted to add some trees? So this is where I really want to maybe use a class file to do that. And so I'm going to go in here and uh, Go to my ActionScript panel. And obviously, when you uh, want to write to, um, when you use a class, the first thing you have to do is import tree. Okay? Now, once you import the class, I want to be able to create a new variable, right? Hey! What do we have? So, we actually have code completion for custom classes now. So, I'm going to get all, all, all the code there, but you see, there's a tree. All right. So I'm going to say, OK, great. I'm going to have my, my new tree. And now I'm actually going to maybe instantiate this. So. Tree uh, object. Notice there it is. 
And I can actually go through here and look for objects that are created. Now, I have something called add, add tree. So you notice I can scroll down and there's add tree. And that comes straight from the class I just imported. And it says I need to actually pass it a display object. Great. I'm going to say this because that's the stage. And voila, there's my tree in the game. But so custom class code completion and custom class code inspection is now part of the Flash IDE. So um, once again, for those of you who've been asking it for several years, <laughs> stop sending me emails. But, but, uh, it's in there. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that is true. And so I, I worked on the I started the flashbook. All right, you know, Mark, you're absolutely right. So, uh, you know, for those people who want to use Flash Builder, um, does anybody use Flash Builder? Well, Flex Builder. Or Flex Builder, you can do three types. All right, fine, fine. So, how about if I show you a different example that might help in this area? All right. So, I'm going to show you another example. And um, let's actually go to another file. Let's say open. And I've got a different. It's going to be the same file, I'm just going to try and build it in a different way. So here I have the same file now. In this case, maybe I want to actually use a document class instead of putting code in my, on my frame. So I'm going to be able to go in here and um, I've got a uh, class called game. Now most of the time, most of the time, if you don't have a class, you can actually click on this button here. Let me uh, click here. And so there's my interface. Now notice the second option. Says, what if you want to actually edit this code? I don't want to edit it in Flash IDE. I want to actually edit it in Flash Builder. All right, sure, we can do that. Now it's going to create a Flash project for me. There's a new type of, of a Flex or Flash Builder project called Flash Professional, and there's my code now available inside of. Uh, it's not just. We just send the file over there. Now, one of the biggest things a lot of people is like, well, you know, I, I like staying in Flash Builder. I don't like, go have, I don't want to have to go back to Flash all the time. I just use Flash IDE for my symbols and for compiling when I do all my code. Notice there's a couple symbols up here, icons. So you notice I can actually publish, test, and debug straight from Flash Builder back into Flash now. So if I click here, it's going to actually run my, my code. But if I close out of the Swift, it automatically takes me back to Flash Builder. Now, you don't have to actually be in Flash Authoring to create this workflow. Um, for example, if you go to New, you notice in, uh, in Flash Builder, I now have this option that says New Flash Professional Project. And in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to ask you to give it a flaw file. All you have to do is point it to a flaw file. And it basically starts the same workflow, but from the Flash Builder side instead of from the Flash Professional side. So depending on which tool you use most, you can actually start it in Flash, Flash Pro, or you can actually start it in Flash Builder and the same workflow um, basically happens back and forth. So now we have the ability to basically publish, um, compile, and test your flaw files from Flash Builder and vice versa, and actually edit code from Flash uh, Pro into um, Flash Builder. So, the integration is getting much, much tighter. Um, so I figured for those of you guys who uh, like some of the more advanced uh, coding functionality, uh, that's something that we're uh, continuing to strive on. Now, there's still a lot more work we can do between those two products. There's still a lot of integration we can do, and we're not completely done with it. Um, so it's going to take some time to get everything worked out, but we feel this is a very good start, and I think you're going to like some of the integration that the, the teams have actually done. We've been working very closely with, uh, with the two teams. So that's kind of what we've done around uh, some of the features around the development side of the house. So I've only got a couple of, like a minute left here. I might be able to show them one more thing. All right, so let me show you something that's really much more on the completely visual side. Um, this, is not a, uh, this is not a developer's uh, feature, but I, I think it's pretty neat. And I'm just going to go very quickly here. I'm going to use a new uh, deco brush that um, we uh, built. Actually, this is a, the community uh, took a look at sort of what we, what we did with deco last cycle. And a couple of members came back and said, well, you know, your, your deco brush over 